Yo, what's good, boxing heads and fight fans around the world? B Marsh with another boxing video. So we about to take you back, man. This is um fights we didn't get to see series, and um you could actually check out my fights we didn't get to see series on the playlist right here on my YouTube page. You know, you could check it out right in the playlist. Um, you'll see it as under fights we didn't get to see. I have numerous fights of um this is this isn't like no um mythical matchups like. I don't know, like, um, let's say, for instance, Sugar Ray Robinson versus Marvin Hagler or Manny Pacquiao versus Duran at lightweight. No, th th these aren't them type of fights because, you know, these these fights, let's say Hagler versus Sugar Ray Robinson, that's, those are mythical matchups, fights that, you know, these two guys' careers were, Robinson was a guy from the 50s and Marvin Hagler was basically a guy from the 80s, you know what I mean? Just like... You know, um, you know, so this right here, these these type of fights I, I talk about on fights we didn't get to see series is basically fights that didn't happen and um, fights that should have happened, you know, with two fighters who are, are were around the same timeline, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, for instance, let's say, um, you know, people always say Floyd Mayweather never fought Antonio Margarito, so that's a good example of a fight we didn't get to see, or Floyd Mayweather versus Kostya Zeus, you know, something something to them them sorts, you know, so this right here, I'm taking you back to August 25th of 2012, you see it right there, August 25th, 2012, this fight was supposed to be between the WBA regular champion at middleweight, that was um, Gennady Golovkin, uh, versus Dmitry Pirog, who was the WBO champion, you know what I'm saying? And the reason um, Golovkin was the WBA regular champ because, um, what's his name, had the, um, what's the man's name? Um, Felix Sturm. Felix Sturm had the WBA super, middle the super belt at, um, at middleweight, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, the man um, Felix Sturm wasn't trying to fight Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, you know what I'm saying? He, um, you know, he wasn't even trying to fight Dmitry Pirog, you know what I'm saying? Felix Sturm wasn't trying to fight nobody, you know what I mean? So, this fight right here was going to be a nice unification, you know what I'm saying? This fight right here, Dmitry Pirog, of course, was a champion from 2010 when he knocked out um, Danny Jacobs in five rounds, you know what I'm saying? He knocked him out in five rounds to, to win the vacant WBO middleweight strap that was vacant because um, the WBO stripped... They stripped Sergio Martinez, you know what I mean? And Sergio Martinez had that WBO strap that he got from uh, when he beat Kelly Pavlik to win the WBC, WBO, and the Lineal, the Lineal Championship. That's how, um, that's what um, Sergio Martinez beat. Um, he beat, um, what's his name? I just said his name, man. <sighs> Kelly Pavlik, you know what I'm saying? So this, and Kelly Pavlik, I'm sorry, Sergio got stripped, so Pirog fought for the vacant title versus Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs was the favorite. Damn, Dimitri Pirog knocked this guy out in five rounds, you know what I'm saying? He knocked him out in the fifth round, beautiful knockout. That's a fight I probably watch once every two months, you know what I mean? Because Dimitri Pirog was a very good fighter, in my opinion, you know? And, you know, Triple G didn't get to fight Felix Sturm. Felix Sturm opted to fight um, Daniel Gill. In a unification, Daniel Gill had an IBF strap, and Daniel Gill went out to Germany and he beat um, Felix Sturm and he became a unified champion at our middleweight. You know what I mean? But Sergio Martinez was still the kingpin of the division. You check it. Now, like I said, this is a beautiful fight right here. But going into this fight, Dmitry Pirog had he had some difficult decisions to make. You know what I'm saying? The man Dmitry Pirog basically had to, uh, you know, he had to. Um, he had the, uh, what you call it, you know, he had the WBO strap, but he had to give it up, you know what I mean? He had to give it up in order to fight the man Golovkin, you know what I'm saying? Because he had a mandatory, and that his mandatory was um, Hassan Indam Jakam, you know, the guy from Cameroon based out of France, you know, a guy who's, um, you know, who's fought guys like... Uh, you know, Peter Quillen, he fought fellas like uh, David Lemieux. He fought the, the Ryota Murata guy in Japan in his last fight. You know, Hassan Indam Jakam, Curtis Stevens. He's been around the block at middleweight, you know what I mean? Good fighter, but the man, uh, the man goes down too easy. So, you know, the man, Dmitry Pirog, had a difficult decision. Fight the man um, Indam Jakam, and it would not be televised on HBO. 
or fight Triple G and have to vacate his belt. Man, that was easy, easy decision for the man Dimitri Pirog. Even though it was a difficult decision, he decided to vacate um, to get stripped of his WB, WBO title and go ahead and take that fight with, um, with um, Gennady Golovkin, you know what I'm saying? Now, you know, the man Triple G, like I said, you know, the man was um, you know, the WBA regular champion, you know what I mean? Who'd he beat? Guys like Milton Nunez, whoever those guys he, he fought on his way up. Only guys that I was really familiar with on Triple G's ascension before he came to, 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 to HBO was Kasim Ouma, who gave to me, in my opinion, gave trip, um, Kasim uh, Ouma gave Triple G one of his most difficult fights ever, you know what I mean? A very difficult fight for him, you know. But, you know, it's like I said, man, these two guys, they didn't get to fight. Dimitri Pirog injured his back. Um, he injured his back on his way up to, on his, on when he was training for the fight on August 25th of 2012, you know what I'm saying? And that was a damn shame, man, because, man, I really wanted to see this fight, you know, because Dimitri Pirog only fought once on HBO, you know what I mean? He was supposed to be the B-side versus Danny Jacobs. I just seen an article even sometime this year. Dimitri, um, Danny Jacobs' trainer was basically saying Danny Jacobs should not, have not been in that fight. Oh, because they're saying the man's grandmother had passed just that same week, Danny Jacobs, and also... um. You know, uh, uh, you know, basically, you know, Danny Jacobs that night fought with with the cancer. There goes the punch right there. Rob up, right hand, eat that. And the man Dimitri Pirog switched stances in the man. He came from southpaw to orthodox right there. This one he fought Kofi Jantua. Kofi Jantua is an African Ghanaian guy who be there in the Mayweather gym. You know what I mean? He's a sparring partner, matter of fact, for Floyd Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? Now, the man Triple G. Man, like I said, this was a, would have been a beautiful fight. This would have been his first fight on HBO, you know what I mean? And um, I think, um, ooh, this fight right here, man, this fight would have been a beautiful fight. Let's get into it. Let's break it down what I think would have happened, you know what I mean? This is basically like a breakdown in prediction for a fight that we'll never get to see. It never happened, and we didn't get to see it. Okay. Now, Triple G is a guy who... Um, by 2012, man, he hadn't fought nobody like a Danny Jacobs. I thought the man, um, the, the, is she, uh, what's his name? Triple G and, and Dimitri Pirog had common opponents. Ishida, the one Japanese dude, that was actually the last fight of Dimitri Pirog's career was when he fought Ishida and, um, you know, he went the distance with the guy, you know what I'm saying? But he schooled him. He won almost every single round, you know what I'm saying? Um, and also Danny Jacobs. That's another co common opponent, you know? Danny Jacobs fought Triple G in Triple G's last fight. It went the distance. I had Danny Jacobs winning it, but the judges saw it in favor of um, of uh, Triple G. And Triple G knocked out the Ishida guy in like... In like three rounds, he knocked him out cold, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, Triple G had fought the guy Proska. That was his first debut on, on HBO, Proska, the Polish guy. Um, and, um, you know, the man, um, what's his name? That was supposed to be that fight where he fought Proska. That was supposed to be Gennady Golovkin versus Pirog, you know what I'm saying? Now, how do I see the fight happening? You know, I think the man Pirog was... Uh, very slick fighter, man. Very slick fighter for a Russian dude. Pirog reminded me of fellas like... Um, his defense was to me his best attribute, to be honest. You know what I mean? His defense reminded me of fellas like Roberto Duran or even um, James Tony. You know what I mean? The man had a nice shoulder roll. The man, um, Dimitri Pirog, you know what I'm saying? Had a nice shoulder roll. He had a nice... Um, was a guy who had nice reflexes, nice upper body movement, body movement, head movement. And he just would stay in the pocket, and he's, and he's hard to hit, you know what I'm saying? He was also a guy, Dimitri Pirog's favorite fighters, who he emulated himself after, was Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray Leonard and Floyd Mayweather. Those are two excellent guys to actually emulate, to be honest, you know what I mean? Because Sugar Ray Leonard, to me, in my opinion, is one of the best finishers I've ever seen in boxing. You know what I'm saying? He's one of the best finishers I've ever seen in boxing. When he has a guy hurt, he's going in for the kill. Fuck that... Fuck that going to points shit, you know. He's trying to go in for the kill, you know what I'm saying? 
Look what he did to guys, um, you know, like how he finished off Tommy Hearns in the very first fight, you know, with Tommy Hearns, you know what I mean? Look at how he did fellas like, um, um, you know, even when he fought fellas like, um, what's his name, the Bible of Boxing, Wilfre Wilfredo Benitez, you know what I mean? You know, the man um, Sugar Ray Leonard, or that white dude, the Davy Boy, whatever the fella's name is, the dude he knocked out cold with that nice, was it a left hook? He was a very good finisher, you know what I'm saying? Look at the guy, Dimitri Pirog, look at his stance, you know? The man keeps his shoulder roll, he always keeps his, his um, right hand right by his chin, holds it like a telephone. The man was very fundamentally sound, very hard to hit in close quarters, a guy who pivots, moves around, has excellent footwork, and that's something Triple G, in my opinion, that never faced, you know what I mean? The best fighter he had faced up until this point right here of 2012 was Kasim Ouma. And Kasim Ouma is not exactly quite the fleet of feet, you know what I mean? He's not the quickest with his footwork, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, I think the man Triple G would have had problems with this guy, Dimitri Pirog, you know? Dimitri Pirog fought a more athletic fighter than Danny Jacobs, and look what Dimitri Pirog did to Danny Jacobs, you know what I'm saying? You know, he confused him with a lot of um, a lot of looks, you know? He even switched stances on him. Look at that right hand. Rob up, and he's actually in the, um, you know, he's, he's in his orthodox stance right there, but if you've watched this fight, the man was in the southpaw stance, right before he got he confused the guy Danny Jacobs and got on the inside and just clocked him with that right hand you know what I'm saying look at the defense look at the defense look at the defense and the counter punching these are attributes right here that Triple G is not, has, is not accustomed to you know what I mean you check it Triple G in my opinion hasn't conquered all styles we haven't seen him fight against a great inside fighter who Andre Ward would have been that guy if Triple G did face him. And we haven't seen him against a nice slick boxer with nice footwork, very nice lateral movement, and a guy who has good head movement. Uh, just a, a guy who's just a slick fighter, a, a la Dimitri Pirov. We never got to see that, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I think Triple G is a come forward fighter, a pressure fighter, but he's, his footwork, great at cutting off the ring, yes. His hand speed is not the fastest, but he ha does have a beautiful jab. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't really move his head really too much. And that's where I think a guy like Dimitri Pirog would have the advantage. He'd just um, be counter-punching the man. And that Triple G would have to set his feet, had have to set his feet to throw power shots and leverage, you know what I mean? He cuts off the ring well, yes. But he'd have trouble, in my opinion, tracking down a guy like Dimitri Pirog. You know what I mean? Dimitri Pirog was a guy who... You know, he was just a slick fighter, and he was athletic. Not quite as athletic as Danny Jacobs, in my opinion, but definitely more athletic than Gennady Golovkin, you know what I'm saying? Now, some people might say, oh, Gennady Golovkin, he, he took out Ishida in three rounds, you know what I'm saying? You know, while Dimitri Pirog went the distance with him. But Dimitri Pirog dominated... In, even though it went the distance versus Ishida, the Japanese dude who who knocked out, he knocked out Kirkland, man. When I still think about that, that shit still hurts me, man. You know, he beat up Kirkland, you know, that Ishida guy, okay? Some might say, oh, Golovkin did better versus Ishida. Well, Danny Jacobs beat Triple G in my opinion, you know what I'm saying? Triple G looked bad and struggled against Danny Jacobs. And the, and the man P-Rock, he knocked the guy out in like five rounds. Cole, Cole clocked the man Danny Jacobs. You know what I'm saying? And Danny Jacobs, like I said, was the favorite. He was the HBO fighter. That was Dimitri p -Rock's HBO debut. And he's only fought on HBO just once, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think it'll be a very nice fight, you know? Dimitri p -Rock was a guy who would have to, um, you know, he'd have to... Um, He'd have to be very protective of his chin. That's no doubt about it. And if Triple G kept, couldn't land that punch, then there's no way he can win the fight, in my opinion. You know what I mean? That Triple G has beat up guys just like Cannoli, guys who are just come forward fighters, guys who are stationary fighters, whose feet are stuck in quicksand, got cement blocks on their feet. You know what I'm saying? The Daniel Gill knockout was beautiful. I was there live and direct in MSG for that fight. You know what I mean? You check it. A lot of fuckers, they, uh, fellas say they uh, they Triple G fans. They swear Triple G's nuts, man. They love the guy, but they've never even gone to see the man fighting. You know what I'm saying? 
You know what I mean? At least I paid my money to go see Triple G fight, you know what I mean? And that's because I'm a fan of boxing, you know what I mean? I might have not bought his pay-per-views, but I've definitely supported boxing by going to these main events, to these live events, you know? But um, as far as the how I see the fight going, I just see Dimitri Pirog probably winning this fight on unanimous decision, you know what I'm saying? Unanimous decision on points, I see him winning... The fight probably seven rounds to five, maybe eight rounds to four. I see him frustrating Triple G with the movement, the footwork. I see Dimitri Pirog um, just clocking him with nice um, right hands, you know what I'm saying? Jabbing, even though Triple G has a better jab. But I see Dimitri Pirog, you know, and he has the faster hand speed. You know, he can when he hurts a guy, he goes in for the kill himself too, you know what I mean? Dimitri Pirog, remember, was a champion only at 17 and 0. He was 17 and 0. Danny Jacobs was 20 and 0 when they got into that fight. Both guys were undefeated, you know what I mean? Which made that fight a beautiful fight and gotta give the man Dimitri Pirog big props for what he did because Danny Jacobs has he's lost to Triple G, yes, but I like I said, I thought he won that fight, you know. And um, Dimitri Pirog, I just think, was the better fighter. I thought he'd faced a better competition by 2012, August 25th, when they fought. I see Triple G being very frustrated by not be, being able to hit this guy, you know what I mean? Very difficult target to hit. Reminds me of fellas like James Tony in the pocket. Reminds me of fellas like um, Roberto Duran in the pocket. Hard to hit. Even Floyd Mayweather with the shoulder roll. You know, you see it right there, you know what I'm saying? A guy who turns defense into offense real quick when you when you fuck around and um and um and uh, make a mistake, you know, he gonna make you pay. So I think Triple G would have trouble. He would cut off the ring, yes, but he would get caught with nice punches on his way, trying to cut off the ring and trying to throw his his punches which are not faster than the combination punches than um than um Dimitri Pirog. I think to Dimitri Pirog would just win this fight. His reflexes, the way he parries punches, you know what I'm saying? He parries punches and just counter punches. I just think the guy was an excellent fighter. His technical skill set was almost second to none at his division, at um at our middleweight division. You know what I'm saying? So this was a fight we didn't get to see. I got Dimitri Pirog winning this fight via unanimous decision. There goes Ishida. There goes the Ishida fight. I got him winning this fight by decision. Seven rounds to five, eight rounds to four at max. I just think Triple G hadn't seen this type of caliber fighter back in 2012, even up to 2017 when he fought Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs did give the man a lot of movement, lateral movement, and that's the reason why Triple G did struggle in the fight. But Triple G, in my, I'm sorry, Danny Jacobs, in my opinion, wasn't sitting on the punches, trying to punch through the man. He did a few times, caught him with a nice left, um, in close quarters when they was on the inside. Cole caught the man Triple G flush in his face, you know what I mean? But um, I think that's what the judges didn't score for the man. They didn't give him um, Danny Jacobs. They didn't give him the decision because they felt the man wasn't sitting there in the pocket and just cold clocking the man, you know what I mean? You check it, he'd punch and he'd move. But it wasn't enough combination punches from Jacobs. But with all that said, I got Dimitri Pirog winning this fight. This would have been a beautiful fight. I think this would have been Triple G's first loss. And in my opinion, the real star who HBO should have been promoting and would have been promoted if this went according to this prediction, I think Dimitri Pirog had the opportunity to become a star on American TV. And that's what he longly wanted. He wanted to become a star on HBO. You know what I'm saying? Because his favorite fighters of all time, Sugar Ray Leonard and, they, and, and, and Floyd Mayweather, were HBO staples. You know what I'm saying? They always fought on HBO. But unfortunately for him, that never happened. And he was willing to give up his WBO belt in order to fight the man Triple G for the WBA. It wasn't going to be a unification, but... The man, p Rock was willing to drop that belt because he was confident he would have beat Triple G. Be Marsh Boxing, leave your thoughts and comments. Let me know what y'all think about this fight. And let me know actually in the comment section, who do you think would have won this fight? Beautiful fight we would have got to see. And I think Dimitri p Rock would have become a star. But HBO, knowing HBO, they would have hated on him for beating Danny Jacobs and Gennady Golovkin, two guys that they wanted to make stars on their network. Be Marsh Boxing, thanks for listening. I'm gone.